Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, wait, I'm supposed to say my thing. <laughs> I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like someone. Que pasa, Mufasas? What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Mwansa Mike. You're about to see a clip from a worship night my friends and I were having uh, a while back um, in January at my boy Danny's place. Um, it's someone speaking. Um, I didn't watch the clip because I, I remember I was going back through footage and I saw I'm like, hey, I, I think I should post this because I know I recorded it for a reason and it was a really good reason. I didn't watch it. My friend, I'm not going to say her name, give me a privacy. Um, hope you can enjoy it. And yeah, it's a really good message because I recorded it. <laughs> I don't remember, but I recorded it. John's vision. Um, this is after Jesus had died. He had crucified. He had been crucified, died for all of our sins. Um, and he didn't stay dead. He Come was on. resurrected. Yeah, yeah. And Woo! years Woo! passed. And then we realized that Jesus didn't just come for the Jews. He came for the slave. He came for the Gentile. Yeah, yeah. He came for the Arabs. He came for the Chinese. He came for people in South America. He came for every tribe and every nation. Mm -hmm. And so this is John's vision. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, every tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were all wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, yeah. which is Jesus. Right. He is the perfect Come Lamb. Come and after His sacrifice, we don't need to get another Lamb to yeah. kill. His blood yeah, yeah. was perfect and innocent, and He washed us all completely clean. And it, you just can never get tired of that. We just can't get tired of that. And I was talking to my girl, Lindsay, and we were talking about Acts and how when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus left, yeah. but... He didn't really leave because he blew his Holy Spirit onto his people. Yeah. And it was in moments like these yeah, yeah. where we get to just remember that we don't need to go, go, go all the time. Missions and going and evangelizing actually ends in the throne room. Whew. And so we are here experiencing part of the throne room that we're going to experience for eternity. Yeah. So stillness is a gift. When we get to be together in community, and it says, it says this, that therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb, the Lamb of God, which is Jesus, at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So I don't know what you're going through today, and I know we're celebrating MLK tomorrow, and I don't know if you really put thought into that, into the history of this country, into the tension between whites and blacks and um between socioeconomic status, but there's a tension. Mm. There's slave, there's free, there's Gentile, there's Jew. But in heaven, we're one. And right now, we have some blinders on. Mm -hmm. And there's some brokenness in each of us. Mm -hmm. But in heaven, there's no slave or free, we're all free. Mm -hmm. And in heaven, there's no Gentile or Jew, we're children of God. This equality and so let's just like take in this moment where we get to live in community together and let the springs of living water from heaven flow in this room and as we go into this week um yeah let's just sit in that for a little